Hello, Pendle here from Sound Dust with the, finally, the update of Infundibulum 1, which is cleverly called Infundibulum 1.1. And this takes some of the uh, special stuff that was added into the Synthundibulum instrument and builds on the already fantastic time-funneling abilities of Infundibulum 1. So you can have a look at the video for that if you want to see what it was originally, but it's that and a whole lot more. And um, it's so good that I'm actually not putting myself in this video. That's why I just don't want to distract from the joyousness that is possible. So, briefly, Infundibulum is a whole host of... Well, I want to say a whole host, I mean three. It's three instruments, or, or we'll call them channels, with some great sounds in them, and voila. And each of these channels has a load of really cool gubbins here, and it also has its own multi-sequencing device, which can go from being a sequencer, sorry, not a sequencer, an arpeggiator, and also this thing called the gate, which basically it runs the sample but it acts as a, a kind of tremolo effect, so you can kind of cut into the sample rhythmically. Now, every single one of these you can set to different lengths, up to 64 steps and different times, obviously, from 128 to, uh, well, there's a whole kind of meltdown section as well, but to kind of whole notes. Um, you can run them all three at the same time with different lengths, and you've also got swing, decay, wonk, which kind of adds kind of moves them out of time with each other, basically. But the new thing for Infundibulum 1.1 is, if you click over here, is the filter section as well. So you've also got the same kind of thing going on, but with both high and low pass filters, which was developed for the Synthfundibulum, the uh, Soviet Synthfundibulum, but it's an incredibly powerful thing, and it's just quite amazing what you can do with it. So these here relate to these here so this is your high pass and that's resonance and this is your low pass and that's resonance so let's just go back to the default again it can sound like this you can build an infinite range of hybrid instruments from this pool of generally percussive, fast attack, uh, plucked and keyboarded and hit sounds, which loop really interestingly because they've got start and stop points. So once you extend beyond that and then start looping them, that's when it gets interesting, like this. If we go here, this is just a dulcet tone sample, but you've got loop lengths here. So you can adjust loop lengths and get interesting stuff there just from the way that different notes loop. You've also got sample start here as well. So you can pick the or take out the attack section if you want. There you go. I mean that itself I find rather lovely. Obviously you stick some reverb on it, which is here. We've got loads of impulse response reverbs. Uh, We've got some new ones of these actually as well, which is part of the update. And it's all about... It'll sometimes click if you automate that, because that's the nature of it. If you go to the gate mode here, set it to, I don't know, eight steps. The joy of this is having kind of eight steps against 12 steps, etc., to get interesting uh, polyrhythmic stuff. You've got a quick uh, sequencing thing there. Oh, you have to turn it on as well, obviously. So you've got the rhythmic stuff going on from the gate, but you've also got what's going on with the um, loop add stuff as well. Decay. That kind of stuff. So, you know, instantly that's useful. Now, let's actually put another one in. Turn them on and off there. Let's put that also on a gate. 
Let's give it 12 steps. Let's just randomly put some stuff in. Let's set a short loop. This is the loop start time over here as well. So if we put them on, that one's, yep, they're kind of slightly different. Oh, always remember to turn the bloody thing on. So you've got just really quick ways of doing... See, this is a really good thing to have as your kind of wild card in your template. It's all very well having a big orchestral template with stuff that you know. But it's great to have something that's going to do something interesting that you didn't think about. You can literally just drag a MIDI file into this, play around with this kind of stuff, and see what comes out. Okay, let's, let's just put another dulcet tone in there. Because we can. We'll go for gate mode again. Uh, let's just do a three-er. Let's set the loop. So let's take that up an octave. Yeah. Give it a bit of, let's put it in some reverse reverb. How can that not be useful? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be showing you new features, but I'm getting carried away. The up here, we've got an extra kind of a uh, bit of filth, which is the channels go in order, and I suppose I should talk you through those. But you've got an extra layer of filth at the start. Working through a channel, you've got pan, which does obvious stuff. But you've also, if you drag that, you can, uh, oh no, it's bend. Bend, let's start at the beginning. Bend, you can bend up or down. So, for instance, if I set that to bend 12 and that to bend minus 12, if I now bend, this is the pitch bend, one goes up, one goes down. Another useful, really useful feature. Pan, obviously there, but drag pan up and you've got a time synced panning thing which goes super fast or very slow. Another way of adding movement. Yep. Then you have this fella here and this fella here. These, this is the kind of, uh, these are the, an extra distortion unit and you've got a, let's just take this two off. You've got a bit reduction, which can go quite brutal. Or you can turn it off. And then you've got transistor or tube with drive and damp, which have from subtle to extreme effects. Turn it off there. Go back here. ADSR. Does the stuff you'd expect. We'll come back to the filters. Vibrato. Which is great for adding extra woos and chorus likewise with time and depth. Here's your impulse responses. These are all specially made by me. I, I'm a fan of Springs. Uh, you've got Spring of an EMS as well. And then this is the delay send, which relates to this delay here, which you turn on here. It's very, all these knobs here, oh look, they turn, this means things are turned on or off. So there's the delay going. Let's take that wobble off. Let's put that back there. So that's your delay with various speeds, etc. It's just one. Here's three. Yeah. And that's all the same sound. Let's put different sounds in. So we've got Dulcetone, Ambira, Mark One, Rhodes Piano, Clavinet, Chime Bars, Marimba, 
a Kramer upright piano, which has been fiddled around with, a knackered piano, which has got loads of felt on it, glockenspiel, eight-string ukulele, tuning forks, a banjo ukulele, which is very handy, music box, kind of picked charango, a couple of wind-based kind of um, synth patch, synth sampled patches I made. Um, Bastille Micro Fanny, <laughs> Micro Fanny, Micro Granny is an interesting sampling, low bit, low rate sampling device. There's some vocals in there. Uh, this is a greeting as card that records vocals, which I sang into. Um, Korg MS-10, some basic. So you've got some nice basic synths as well. Uh, an actual proper wasp, which is nasty as hell. DSi Evolver, big favourite of mine for more nasty stuff. And then you've also got some drums as well, which are really useful. And then some reverse stuff, reversed marimba rolls, reverse piano, and then some combinations of these above. And then the other amazing feature, loading user samples as well. So you can actually load your own samples. And there's another video kind of explaining how to do this, which uh, I will point to, and then you can go and use. But anyway, let's put in another piano and we'll make that into some wind. Didn't know what I was going to get. It's just great for the unexpected. Um, these are insert effects. These are send effects. And the reverb, the send here, affects everything. Uh, dirt can go really dirty. The EQ is really useful and the volume knob is also useful because you can do this clever thing where if you turn the, vol turn the EQ on, turn the volume down and then turn the IRs up and now you'll just get a straight IR signal. So that's a way of completely circumventing this stuff. You can also add that in as well. You've got a four band EQ, phaser because hey, why not? Depth and speed for those swirly burbles. Rotor also, it's a really nice thing to have mixed in a little bit. And with the tweet versus woof thing, let's take those back down again. Getting a lot of signal from there. You can do quite a lot with that. This is big old reverb, which is great to use if you turn off the dry entirely and have an entirely wet reverb. That's quite a short one. It's a quite nice way of blurring sounds. So this is coming after the arpeggiators, which is why it's blurred. But of course you can mix those in as well. Yeah, turn that off. So now we need to have a look at the dung 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 filters. Oh yeah, also before I go to the filter, swing is really quite handy. I'm just whacking the swing up and it will swing. And also, I also haven't mentioned the arpeggio. Yeah, you've got a chord mode, so that'll just play whatever's on there as a chord. I mean, that's whatever notes you're playing, it just plays them straight through. Whereas the arpeggiator will arpeggiate. Well, let's just turn the other ones off so you can hear that. Here we go, arpeggiate. Let's check the speed up a bit. Uh, go. Yeah. So this basically affects the velocity. And you've also got a pitch control here, so you can whack it up an octave. Let's put in the others. Obviously, you can mix these. Let's make that into four, so it doesn't sound quite so crazy. Let's take the swing off. And also wonk, so let's show you wonk. Wonk moves things back in time. The 
so you can kind of muse, muse, move things out of sync with each other in a Steve Reichian way. Oh. So you've got this uber tinkle machine. Let's actually make even more tinkliness. Uh... Yeah, right. Promise now, filter. So, same thing. You've got all that stuff going on. Let's, in fact, let's take these off. So we're back to just straight sound. Yep. Same thing again. Let's just go to a uh, basic filter there. Low pass on the first one. Let's put it at sixteenths. Let's go here and let it quickly put in a pattern for us. That's very basic. Let's turn the other ones off. Have you noticed it's a little bit clicky, which you might want. If you don't want, you've got slew, which kind of softens, yeah. And then imagine putting a high pass thing in, uh, same speed. Let's do it as a six. Let's put in, oh, wrong one. Let's put in the same pattern. But it's going to be, it's going to look reversed because it's doing the opposite thing, if you know what I mean. Let's change one there. Let's slew it a bit. Let's put up some resonance. These are quite high resonance, so they'll... Oh, no. It's one less obvious. Let's turn that one off so you can see what that one's doing. Oh, I've done the wrong one. That's why. So you can do, um, let's turn off the delay. You can do things with a resonance. You can add kind of synth stuff in. And in fact, let's turn that into a synth. Let's put the wasp in. So there's something useful there already. Let's add the other things in. Let's uh, give that a bit more gnarliness. Let's put that through a bit of uh, chimey reverb. And for instance, obviously, we could then do something different with that. So, because you, you've got different cycles going, you're going to get different points where you get certain kind of crossovers. And of course, you can then put these on as well. Yeah. I'm getting carried away again. Uh, put some chorus on there. Just, just pick some different sounds and see what comes up. I mean, I am absolutely guessing. If it's terrible, obviously I won't have it in the video. Simple. Here we go. There you go. Some of the flipping reverb off. Uh, let's do something cute. There's something useful there, surely. So, the instrument comes with a whole heap of snapshots, starting with the motivation of starters, which is a huge selection of three versions of just the own, the sample, the sound source with itself, times three. And then you've got maximals, which are massive, minimals, which are minimal, meandering, which is a kind of slow... I mean, this thing doesn't have to be... doesn't have to be all kind of happening. It can also be... slow and gorgeous.
Oh yeah, also that's me adding some aftertouch, get a little bit of a wobble. It's just got so many possibilities. And the motoric or rhythmic things which use the some of the drum sounds which are really useful. So you've got a you've got a thumpy thing going on there. We could even change those to actually a spot a hat and a snare in there. That's a snare. So, instant polyrhythm. So even that, you know, if you're looking for kind of rhythmy things and you didn't realise and you didn't where you were going, stick a MIDI file in, see what comes out. I think, you know, this is the whole thing about this is it's a, it's kind of wildcard generator and it's just there to be played with. It's a, it's a time funnel playground. As I quite like to keep saying. And you know, all thanks to the wonderful Kurt Vonnegut for the Infundibulum concept. So there we have it. I think I've covered everything. I usually forget something. Infundibulum 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, also, so you've got a, a manual here, which shows you lots of things. There's also a manual here that shows you how to load the samples as well. It's not complicated but you do have to do a few special things, and this will show you how to do it. There's also a video uh, on the internet, which you can see. Also comes with an art recorder, so basically you can steal your own ideas. You can record, you can use the multi arps and then record the MIDI file. You can give you a multi-channel MIDI file, which you can then drag into something else or several other things. So either way, it's a machine for inspiring you. Wrong one. It's a machine for inspiring you to do amazing and great things. And let's go to the default. Even the default I love. Uh, thank you very much. This is lovely. And I would say that, wouldn't I? Anyway, thanks very much for holding on to the end. I hope you're all good. The world is still pretty dreadful in many, many ways, but at least I don't have a ponytail anymore, and I'll prove that to you one day. Take care. Bye-bye.